Network. Network. Like we always do about this time. What's up, world? It's your boy Walk. I'm on in the building. You know, that guy, that's Detroit Mail, the what man up, with though? the grandmaster up, plan for whole IOW network. Um, of course, we're missing our sis, Black Barbara Walter. Shout out to you. Uh, we know you got a certain circumstances that couldn't allow you to be here, but right, right. we going to do it in the love for you, Black Barbara Walters. BB, we miss you, baby. Anyway, let's get all the house cleaning stuff. All the preliminaries out the way. Going over to the website, W, 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 I often wonder. 19.com. That's where you get all the information of anything IOW Network related. Right, right. From all the shows we got from a course here on I Often Wonder Podcast. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. granddaddy that started it all. Right, right. To the sports show, the IOW Sports Show. Right. The IOW Sports Late Night Al Edition. Right. Um, episodes, of course, coming to you every Monday and Friday. Well, technically Tuesday and Saturday morning <laughs> at midnight. Right. Um, we got Daddy Cooks, R Bobs. LJ presents with you know a LJ. lot of content. <laughs> LJ, yeah, L Jeffrey Moore. Right, right. You know, shout out to Big Bro. Um, I mean, of course, shout out to Man Down Podcast Network. We got a lot of stuff coming down the pipe. The most important thing that you do need to know is go over, especially if you right now, if you are Apple iOS iPhone users of all sorts, right? Go on over to your store. Download the network. The IOW network is live. It's up. It's, it's up working. and running, y'all. It's running. We told you it was coming now. Here it is. <laughs> Go get it. No worry, Android users. Within the next couple of weeks, we will have a version for the Android up. Promise. Right. Because I can't let Jamel just <laughs> have, you know, all the fun for these Apple heads. I'm not an Apple head. I'm, a, I'm an Androider. All right, so Android or yeah, Earth. I know. I don't know if that's proper English, <laughs> but it will be rolling with it. <laughs> I'm an Android or <laughs> so we will have that app. Right. But today's show, we have a fantastic show lined up for you guys. That's correct. Um, Mel hit me and was like, "Yo, we got these, um, got these few guests coming through. Um, uh, you're kind of similar in the same field as us. They're podcasters. Um, and then I got to listen to it, and then I'm like." This is going to be interesting. I love it. Yes, I, I'm not going to give away too much because we want you guys to go support them right. and listen to their content. But mm-hmm. joining us, the creators of the White Vault, we have Travis and Katie. Welcome to the <laughs> show. Hey guys. Hey guys. How you doing? <laughs> doing good. How about you guys? Oh, oh, man. Wonderful. We're fantastic, wonderful. Fantastic. Fantastic. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Um, to start off, why don't you guys kind of explain to our audience exactly um, uh, your podcast and, and, and the content that you guys have, have available? So Travis and I, we create fictional podcasts. So we create like movies for your ears and we get to tell stories. We get to take people on adventures, take people through horrific things in the fun way. Um, (laughs) Sound like my (laughs) (laughs) ex-wife. Maybe maybe a bit more fun in some aspects. Okay, okay. Yeah, I was about to say that. That don't sound like fun. Our job is we get to entertain. And uh, we're really lucky people in that way. Um, I'm a, I'm the writer, and Travis does the the production, the sound design, and more. Okay. Do you want to explain what the and White our, Vault our, is? Our show, the one that you've got behind you, is The White Vault. Uh, the White Vault is a horror podcast. takes place in Svalbard. It's north of Norway. It's a real place. And a research team is sent there to discover the source of a mysterious signal. But they discover they might not be alone. What terrors <laughs> lurk beneath the ice? We'll find out. 
Oh, <laughs> I like how you set that up. <laughs> it sounds like you got experience doing this before. <laughs> no, that was pretty bit. dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I I gotta admit. Um, so I'm I'm in the first story. I'm about six stories in, and can I say that you guys have mastered? people's imaginaries if, if that makes sense like um just oh, yeah. how you word everything and describe everything you you managed to i guess peaked my imagination my imagination as in taking your words and kind of building the scene with my with my brain and, and my images that i have in my head and i think you guys are, have mastered that you guys have done a fantastic job of doing that um so kudos to you guys for Right, for literally taking, um, like you said, uh, and you described it perfectly, it's a, a movie turned into audio. So, like, like that was the, that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, we we think that it's been a long time coming. We've been working on podcasts for five or more years now, and okay. uh, we've been able to to grow how it is that we present audio to the point where people's imaginations just take over, and. Mm. It's it's a good combo. Like Travis was saying, he was pointing at me, but I'm going to say it's really a combination. I can write what people say, but if if he doesn't put in that soundscape, then you don't get that full um, like enclosed feeling of really right, really being right. there. Claustrophobia. <laughs> <laughs> she, she does a, a great job though of um, when, when you've got these things. Uh, like basically, she passes the the buck off to you guys and says, you know, you're listening to something. What do you think it looks like? And she gives you some descriptors, but your mind, uh, she turns it against you every time. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, I can write terrifying things, but it's never going to be as terrifying as the person listening can make up in their own mind. It's like different so medium is, from like TV to see the monster. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 literally. Like, I love what you guys are doing. And, and uh, to your uh, credit, Caitlin, what you said about with Travis with the sound and the theme music on, on the first season, I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah. This is this is some like X Files David Duchovny type <laughs> shit right here. Like, this this is what I'm talking about right here. <laughs> what so uh, what what gives you guys the inspiration to come up with with, with your content? Oh. She sends me these scripts and I just, <laughs> I just gotta go with them. You just do your job. I heard. Heard. <laughs> Head down. <laughs> Get really done. Uh, oh gosh. Um, so for the White Vault specifically, um, we had been. I, I very much enjoy horror, and we had recently been on a wintry trip to Iceland. Um, mm, okay. It's the only time we could actually afford to go to Iceland because it gets really expensive in the summer when everybody wants to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were like, oh, yeah, let's go when it's snowing and you can't actually drive anywhere. <laughs> well, we did, and, and we almost got thwarted by the weather, but we didn't, and it yeah. was it was adventurous. Um, but... but when we were there, um, we were listening to horror podcasts while we were driving around this beautiful but desolate area and you get this realization for how <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're, we're driving around and it's it's amazing how much you can fall in love with nature even though nature doesn't give any anything about you she does not care right, she will right. kill you in a moment mm. and it means nothing to her but you can still love being there um right. I mean, but right now there's volcanoes going off in Iceland and oh, wow. uh, our cast, many of our cast members, as you've heard on the show, they're mm -hmm. Icelandic and they live there. Right. Uh, as we were, as we were just, driving, though, the, the yeah. roads were getting closed behind us as we were going to each like tourist destination and we oh, couldn't wow. go back. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, when we got back to, we were living in Florida at the time, just like, mm -hmm. you know, I have an idea for a story that involves nature and cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. And I wrote a script. Uh, I wrote a script for the first season and mm -hmm. had an outline for the whole story arc. And okay. uh, I just printed it out, brought it up to Travis, and I was like, this is what we're doing next. Okay. <laughs> no, no discussion, just this is what we're doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let me say, um, first of all, the reason how, how I got turned on to you guys was from uh, L. Jeffrey Moore. He's a friend That's of right. ours. He told us about it. I said, oh, okay. So I started listening to it. And initially, I listened to it because he said he was on it. And so I'm like, I don't hear him. I didn't realize he went only to the fourth season. So I went all yeah. the way to, to finish it. And I finally heard him. But That's how we get no, you. No, I, I'm, I'm going to work up to his, but I'm kind of I'm kinda enjoying, enjoying the journey I'm on. Right. And starting from the beginning. But to so. y'all credit, from the time I turned it on onto the uh, fourth episode, 
Um, we four season tenth episode. I was hooked. I, I was like, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Audio <laughs> crack. Yeah. No, <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> um, but I want to say, um, what's my man name with the voice? Uh, Kasner, Peter Lewis. Yes. I, and I, when I first you started knew, hearing you it, you knew what he was talking about. Yes. <laughs> when I first heard, I said he's gonna be the killer or something, right? Cause that voice sounds like a killer voice. So I was like, he's going to, Grant Kastner's going to be the killer. I mean, Graham's going to be the killer. He's going to be the killer. I know he is. <laughs> you know, so I'm waiting. I'm sitting back waiting. Okay. When are you going to hey, reveal hey, it? Hey, 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 hey. Um, don't, don't give up too much. Oh, oh, he, he, I'm going to work my way up. <laughs> don't, I'm not giving don't, up nothing. don't you spoil I'm not, give, I'm not giving sir. up nothing because you're going to find That's out. That's just how he talks. We, that is, say, <laughs> we, we did an interview with him because uh-huh. people thought like, like, man, this guy is, he's such, he's acting with his voice. Like, no, it's just him. They're like, like, oh, he's oh, overacting. Wow. Why does he try uh, to make himself sound like Batman? And right. Like he literally just sounds like Batman. I thought he was like, <laughs> <laughs> like Jeffy Dahmer's brother or something. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so how did you guys even get started into podcasting at all? What made you want to do podcasting? We uh we were kind of I don't want to say bored, but we wanted to do more things creatively together. And okay. we looked at either doing like making a podcast because we started listening together and that was fun, mm-hmm. or we were gonna like start programming a video game. And we decided okay. after about an afternoon of programming and getting nothing done versus like an <laughs> afternoon <laughs> we got a whole script for a story done. This is an easy like oh, let's do the podcasting thing. It's so much easier. So yeah. much fun. <laughs> you can tell stories this way. Right, yeah, right. It took off, and then like three or four years later. Um, that's actually our careers. It, it's kind of mm. like we do this full time now. We went okay. from like utter hobbyists with no aspirations except to like interact with each other in a creative way to mm-hmm. wow, we're coworkers and like we've got this. <laughs> I don't want to call it an empire, but we're we're fairly um, well off. Yes, in the, indie the empire from my space. closet. <laughs> <laughs> our, our parents' closet. <laughs> one person, one person's closet, another person's empire. Yeah. <laughs> We're, we're happy to be doing this and it's it's been a, lot, a fun ride very yeah. fun yeah Good we originally um we started producing a completely different show it was uh liberty mm. critical research uh-huh. and I saw that. we <laughs> we sat yeah. down together and we tried writing together and mm-hmm. um and then we tried doing the sound design together and we pretty much naturally split off where it was like, okay, I'm going to do the writing and Travis will do the sound design. We found yeah. our strengths and we just played to them. I think you figured out your roles. You were like, yeah. Yeah, 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 let's separate um, this player. Yeah. And since then, it's been an amazing opportunity and growth. We we had our own miniature celebration when we had our first like hundred listens. And we were like, oh yeah, we really like made a podcast. People That's really care. Over. And um, honestly, every time we hit like one of those milestones, we still like sit down and have a beer because we're like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, we, we understand that feeling right. because when we hit certain markers like followers, um, subscribers or anything, right. we're like, yeah, it's paying off. Right. <laughs> All this hard work is paying off. It's paying off because like, yeah. I, I don't, and, and I think maybe you guys can, I'm pretty sure you guys can attest to this. A lot of people don't realize how much um, not just money, time, effort, energy that we invest into this. And, you know, you don't get a lot of giving back to you. So a lot of people don't understand of, of the, the sacrifices that you put into right. the work. Mm-hmm. Especially podcasting. starting off. Yeah, especially yeah, starting, starting off. off. Right. So It don't seem like the ends just the size of the means sometimes. Yeah. Like, okay, I got to put this much in and this much back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, this is one of the things. I think podcasting. Is one of the things you have to love yeah. to do because if you don't, you're gonna be thoroughly disappointed, you know. Well, if and you're, you're looking for certain results. Well, if you're going in for the money, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your 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 satisfaction right. rate is gonna be right. real you low. Know, <laughs> yeah, you know. gotta love it. Uh, we, we tell people the same thing. We when we, we talk at conventions, we actually give talks on on how to make audio drama. Okay. For people who want to learn how to do it, who want to have mm-hmm. uh, the ability to tell a fun story, but okay. don't know how to tell their story. So we mm-hmm. give talks on that. And one of the things I always end with is if you're not having fun, don't do it. Mm. And don't go into it with the expectation of making money. Yeah. <laughs> you're going into a medium that is inherently free. <laughs> <laughs> you're so right. Um, so why horror? In all genres, why horror? Horror is one of those things that sits better in audio because 
if I tell you something, you will imagine something mm -hmm. worse than what I've told you. And mm -hmm. horror is a universal distractor. Okay. Um, okay. Even if you've had a terrible day, mm -hmm. you've still had a better day than the woman getting murdered in the horror story. Well, well that's, actually a, that's actually a good point. <laughs> no. A little morbid, but a good point. <laughs> it's it's a great way to distract yourself from right. everything that's happened in the day. It's a great way to, to relax because as long as you're tense and thinking about the problems in the story, you're not thinking about your own problems for that mm. small amount of time. Okay. So horror really allows people to like escape. It's that idea of escapism that a lot of people go into fiction for they're yeah. looking for something outside of reality and horror does a really great job of very quickly transporting you there yeah. um and i just like scaring people <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're fun stories too but we're, we're also um horror is a big part of our relationship uh we okay. watch horror movies all the time uh, like, say, you need to clarify that you know because you just say horror is a big part of our relationship it's like pause you're like what maybe <laughs> 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 well when we first um when we were first uh, like listening to any podcast together, we were listening to the No Sleep podcast okay. um, that Peter, who plays Graham, is also right. on, and mm -hmm. David, who plays Walter, is also on. And okay. we we had an amazing opportunity when we started podcasting that these people who were kind of our like podcast voice heroes mm -hmm. on the No Sleep podcast yeah. okay. gave us a chance and mm -hmm. decided to take a chance on our show and to okay. voice the characters on our show. And it's amazing how... I don't consider myself a scary person, but <laughs> it's amazing how much horror has become such a wonderful part of my life. Okay. Yes. So I would agree with that. Also kind of like these strange normals for us. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looking at the room we're in and there's just like, oh yeah, there's the box of the human teeth. Yeah. Cause I need that for sound design or like <laughs> you know, the, the little things that you don't think about that you have to like learn and, and get really uh, good at doing in order to right. scare people. Mm -hmm. these, these objects or these um, things you have, uh, these particular set of skills. Oh yeah, I can make monster noises. Oh yeah, I, I guess I can kind of oh, do that. Yeah, that'll work. Like, <laughs> but hold, hold that fun. thought, hold that yeah. thought. We gonna go to, we gonna go to our commercial, our first commercial break. Do you have an upcoming event and you need desserts? Billy J Sweets can take away all of your worries. While you relax, we can prepare scrumptious, delicious, and professionally catered desserts for your event. We offer a wide assortment of cakes, pies, and pastries to ensure your event will be one to remember. Call us at 704-685-7584 or come to the website at millie-j-sweets-treats.square.site. Remember, Millie J Sweets. Three hours after the previous recording, the following occurred. This is some weird shit. What was that? You need to hear this. You too, Rosa. Did you get another response on a radio? No. I've been working on the audio file Jonas took on his phone, trying a couple of tricks to clear it up. I've done my best. You played that? Well, you certainly made it more disturbing. Exactly. That sounded like people, right? And someone, I don't know, dying? Yes. Oh, Kessner, don't just sneak up on people. What's wrong with you? And we are back. It's your eye off the wonder crew. The boy welcome are in the building. Detroit Mail in the building. We have our special guest with us. Right, right. The creators of the white ball, as you just heard right there. <laughs> that insert right there. What what episode was that? Because that, that might be further than what I where I'm at. Yes. Yeah, I think that's still in the um the first season, I believe, but I don't remember what episode. Yeah, it's probably at the six. six. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah, because that, that sounds a little bit further out than yeah. what I am because <laughs> uh, um, I'm at the part where uh, Shorty just woke up from her uh, concussion. Oh, she was okay. Out 24 hours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She, she you got just... a long ways to go. Oh no, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> she's, she's describing the, uh, the figure. Uh -huh. uh, and I got to admit, you know, I'm listening to it. I'm like, yeah, there ain't no black folks out of here, man. It's too cold. <laughs> it's too cold. It's too cold. Let me know y'all get to the summertime. Yeah, yeah. Wait till we get to the summertime. <laughs> you know, and, and then you use the ritual smells of barbecue to bring the spirits out. You know what? I will say that. I will say something about barbecue that unites people. 
What period? No, just uh, well, I'm sorry. No, 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 I'm drinking. Saying, well, I'm, well, I'm gonna say, but no, well, no, let me no, say this. Let me I'm say gonna this. go drinking. Well, let me say no, this. no, just let me finish because in the in the story, uh-huh. drinking help people cope for what the hell they was dealing right, with right. out in this cold situation. Right, right, right. right. But I'm gonna say where I'm from. Drinking. Where I'm from, barbecue. No drinking, bro. Let me you. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about? First of all, first of all, okay, first of all, Detroit, ahead. y'all got more liquor stores on the corner than right. y'all have. Right, but you in, in let, everywhere. Let me finish my point. <laughs> we call barbecues. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. We don't just talk about the actual physical barbecue. When everybody's together, we call it a barbecue. Oh, yeah. So drinking is included. But yeah, um, to your point, what you were saying about that part too, that uh, the creature. Where did you get the idea for the creature? Because as I was listening to it, you know, I had first I had Bigfoot in my mind. And then I started thinking about, you know, other animals and creatures. Cause like the way they were describing, I was like, okay, is it a Bigfoot? Is it a uh You know what I was saying? you know what I was thinking about? I was thinking about the dust cloud in the mummy. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> it's like all these different ideas is going through my head. Yeah, what is it? Because he's, he's a slender, black, right. blurry. I'm, I'm like, like, damn, is Dr. He... J? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, damn, is, is he like on a bad TV frequency? Or right, something yeah. Like that? It, it was like, uh, uh, so many, and I'm trying not to blur <laughs> all the different ones, because I'd have heard, you know, from one all the way to four, so I'm not trying to blur all the images together, but. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't mess it right. up for me. Bro. But where did you get the idea for the monster? Because it, 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 it was interesting when I was listening, trying to imagine what it looked like. So first, I love hearing how you guys interpret it completely differently, which is great <laughs> because, no, it really is like your brain starts to come up with these different ideas to piece together pieces of the story. Right. And it's it's always great when we hear how people imagine things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the reasons I love when people make fan art of our works and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, you see her that way. You see her that way. They're completely <laughs> different people. But it's, it's wonderful. Um, the, I, I, we get asked this a lot because a lot of people really believe that we're um, kind of embedding into different types of cultural creatures because we okay. do call back a lot to uh, things that people recognize as being, let's say, like a Native American to Black, um, mm-hmm. which is like a figurine. Right. But we we didn't take inspiration directly from any individual culture because I was trying to create something that was a standalone mythos. Okay. Um, so it comes from honestly, an amalgamation of what I needed it to be mm-hmm. for it to fit into the story. And I can't okay. tell you much more about that without giving away <laughs> way too much. Okay. 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 Yeah, please she's please a archaeological <laughs> scientist, like, she's not a doctor, but she's got a master's degree in archaeological sciences uh, from uh, Oxford. And she went to school and like, okay. really, like, science and history are her things. So it's okay. like when she goes down and studies this stuff and does research, like it's intense. It's amazing yeah. how things that have terrified people have terrified people throughout history. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. No, and, and that actually kind of brings up to my next question. Yeah. How, how much how much thorough history and research are you guys doing to kind of help um, paint the picture of your settings and all that? Because I can tell just just how you how your light bulb just went off that you, you like it's a lot but kind of give the uh the audience a, a in-depth uh look into that for sure um sorry travis this is a lot about <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. he he does so much research on the mm-hmm. side when it comes to the, the sound design that's okay. so let's that's say let's do the second but so when i start um and i'm let's say i'm outlining a season mm-hmm. my outline alone is going to take me probably about a month. Um, mm. I, I download so many documents. I, mm. I I download so much academic work that I get emails from professors who think I want to read their next paper, even though I just needed that one paper <laughs> that one time. This is dense documents, <laughs> by the way. Like ultra dense. And um, for example, for the White, the White Vault has a, a couple of spinoff stories that we create. Mm-hmm. One of them is Imperial, which is set in 1700s China. Mm-hmm. We did, I, I sorry, she. I did so much <laughs> research to make sure that everything was as accurate as possible okay. um, to find the people who could make the translations for uh, the Mandarin sections and the Manchu sections. Mm-hmm. And then we actually coordinated with a professor here in the U.S., Okay. who is one of the leading people who does Manchu translations because it's a nearly extinct language. Mm. It's so much to make it seem so real because right. even though it is fiction, the more I can ground it in reality, the more terrifying it feels. 
But she brought it to the professor. His response was, well, as a consultant, there's only one point I have with the entirety of the script, and that's the name of this town might have changed 10 years later. We're not really sure. We still don't <laughs> like, know. We don't know if it was called this in 1710, but it might have been called this in 1720. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, other than that, everything's accurate, right? right, right. Yes. <laughs> it gets pretty ridiculous to like, what side, you know, what was the weather on that day at that location it was like a discussion we were having on the miniseries we're working right now for Avram, which I can't say what it's about, but like, right, right. you know, would the food have been available in this location on the side of the mountain or would the smoke have, you know, killed out the trees or, you know, the, whatever was happening. So it's like, wow, how do you yeah. find this stuff? I don't even know. <laughs> weather charts, historical <laughs> weather charts. It goes down these rabbit holes that I just don't even <laughs> understand. Yeah. No, one will, no one will appreciate it, but I'm telling them and then they'll maybe they'll appreciate it. <laughs> so do you have to be just a little bit weird to do a horror podcast? A horror podcast? Oh, I think we're all. Yeah, I think weird. so. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. Weird. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. I think. First um, of all, you can't. First of all, nobody can ever come up to a consensus of what normal is. So let's. let's well, that, that, that's that a that's way. a whole other discussion. <laughs> that's a whole yeah, what, Pandora's what, box. What, right. What is normal? <laughs> yeah. Well, if someone walks up and says, "You know, you're really normal." Doesn't that kind of hurt? Right, right. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm I'm like you. I right, kind of get slightly I offended. Fit in a, I fit in a box? What are you saying? You no, know? no. Because when I when I hear normal, I hear boring. I yeah, hear yeah, plain. Saying, yeah. I hear you know. I'm like this ain't boring. That ain't plain. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. somebody calls me normal, I'm like I I, I take offense to it. Shut up, normal. <laughs> you normie. So Travis, I heard that you guys sent your cast uh, a box of teeth. Yeah, uh, every oh, well, that sounds really weird out of context. Definitely. Yes, right. <laughs> well, so in the story, in the context of the story, they find these boxes with teeth. So it's like mm-hmm. a thing. Um, so uh, we sent them these little uh, boxes that are three D printed, and they had like little three D printed teeth in them. Uh, mm-hmm. Mine doesn't have three D printed teeth because it needs to sound like actual teeth. So it's got actual human teeth. But his uh, is the only one that's with the real only teeth. One with real teeth. All the, other the others okay. were fake. The others were fake. So, so now I got a lot of like a, I got a lot of questions sense. behind it. Where <laughs> you get this human teeth from? <laughs> ethically sourced. Ethically sourced. Very important to, to clarify that. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you cleared uh, that so, up. Yeah. <laughs> now going back to the original question yeah. about you saying your relationship was built around horror, and now you're talking about these human teeth. Yeah, that's that's a whole nother discussion yeah, I, we need to get into. I, I thought you was. I the thought you was has to be authentic. <laughs> <laughs> so I did hear that you use rat bones for that teeth sound. For the first time through, we did, um, and then later we actually got to uh, actual human teeth because um, mm-hmm. it's a reoccurring theme in our stories. Um, but the the rat bones we we were cleaning out our our home at the time. And mm-hmm. we found this skeleton under a floorboard that had been there for probably 60 years. And okay. uh, it was pretty fair game to use. And yeah. normal people would have been like, ew, throw it away. And Travis was like, oh, the sound design. <laughs> yes. No, but I, I love it. I, I love how you, you have a particular sound in your head. And you're like, I'm going to find what's going to recreate this sound. So <laughs> well, <laughs> it comes back to what you were saying about how much research goes into it. Um, mm-hmm. In season three and season or season three, and then later on in season four, there's helicopter sounds, um, right. and there's the sounds of the Andean condors and everything like that. There are only seven thousand of those birds, and we got one. It was like that's wow. tough wow. to record. Yeah, and <laughs> like we consulted someone who used to fly helicopters in the army to find mm-hmm. out what kind of helicopter would have been available in Patagonia for these people oh, to wow. make sure that we had all of these accurate noises with the carry mm-hmm. weight. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so we had like a yeah. bell helicopter recording we, did, yeah. we did do a lot of field stuff um we have like andy and condor we have um arctic petrels for our antarctic story uh aluka which is a fun mini series mm-hmm. um actual manchu spoken on our show for like all the linguistics and languages because the people speak multiple languages on our shows they actually mm-hmm. speak them and it, okay. it's very difficult to find native speakers of some of these languages if they're dead or uh, near, yeah, yeah. near extinct. Yeah, right. Manchu we, being the hardest one. We've gone <laughs> right, through right. great pains to, for the, the accuracy on polar bears. They sound drastically different than grizzly bears. So we had to, yeah. like, Nat Geo doesn't have polar bear audio. They don't tell people that. But you're, <laughs> like, BBC, I, I hit up all the archives. They weren't there. Uh-huh. Getting this audio is, is very much uh, a full-time uh, task. Yeah. There can be for <laughs> oh, wow. the authenticity and, and at sometimes at risk to your life. Um, like with our other stories and, and uh, where you're 
character crawls through an air duct. When I think, right. how am I going to make myself sound like I'm in an air duct and crawling? Because the actress did a great job of the breathing sounds, but now mm -hmm. I have to do this. So I'm dragging a microphone through an air duct and then making <laughs> crawling sounds on a uh, metal bowl. So it gets pretty intensive. Amen. Wow. Shout out oh, for right, the right. That is that right. That's I like dedicated. that. No, See, that, that's, that's right up my alley. I like the, the the perfectionist in, in Travis. I yeah, like because he's a perfectionist. I'm I telling love you. Oh my god. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's kind of person I am. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just the type of cat where when I'm podcasting, I just turn on the camera, I talk my shit, and I get off. But you know what I mean? He's like, I'm constantly adjusting stuff. I don't like the way that sounds. Uh, yeah. I'm going to buy this next time. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. No, no, no. Honestly, you know, people like us, we, we appreciate the, the, um, What's the, I'm trying to find a word that attention to details okay. that you guys are taking mm -hmm. um, um, to create your podcast because to me I think it's paying off in, in, oh, in yeah. my humble opinion. It's a opinion. great podcast because literally what the position I'm at in, in the story I'm mm -hmm. like I'm I'm literally like my brain is like it it, tr it gets triggers by certain sounds right. certain words mm -hmm. and it starts making my own images of what is being said to me so i'm like right. hey this is pretty dope that's what we like to hear <laughs> no you guys are doing it right you're doing it so right. um i heard you guys mention um old guys appalachian we love those guys man i love that's another podcast i like i turn you on later too okay i love that podcast so what's your connection with those guys steve and cam are, are wonderful human beings uh they were not really connected with the greater podcasting community. And I was like, this show keeps getting recommended to me. I got to listen to it. So I did. And then mm -hmm. like they have a website. I'm like I'll just hit him up with an email. Like, Hey, I'm Travis. And, I, I work <laughs> and this was at like the like, very, very beginning of old gods coming out. Uh -huh. And now, now we're like BFFs um, <laughs> <laughs> every, every week for like an hour. I'll come upstairs. I'll open the closet door and Travis will be on the phone. I'm like, who is it? And he's like, Steve. <laughs> we love those guys. Uh, they're, they're family. Good. Yeah. That's a, that's a, another great, um, podcast. I, I will say, I like the way uh, his narr his narration of that of that particular podcast is on point. Mm -hmm. It's like what I like to do is like I, I get up early in the morning and do a job. I do a driving delivery job. That's my little side hustle. So when it's nice and dark outside, I like to turn that on. It kind of just sets the mood. <laughs> you know, I, it's something about. During the daytime, I'm out listen to it, but I really I prefer listen to it when it's dark outside. Cause to me, it's just like the way he sets the mood, sets the stage, his narration. It just seems like the outside um, elements helps even set it, cause it just all goes together perfectly. And it intensifies his yeah, words. Yeah, I'm like, wow. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and I, I kind of like binge listening to that one. I was about to say watch. I'm used to saying binge watching, but yeah. binge listening to that one um, to make. I wanted to finish, make sure I finish um, you guys' podcast. So I think I listened to y'all about 10 hours straight. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Trying to make sure I get it in. It's like, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, that goes to like, he was saying with perfection to me. I like to make sure I have all my information, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. you say something about season four, oh, yeah, I listen to that. You know, you yeah. say something about season two, yeah, I listen to that too, you know. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to remember, but at least, <laughs> at least I was exposed to it. But, um, your characters that you come up with are they are they inspirational characters based on real people or just something you just conjured up in your head so when i was going to grad school mm -hmm. um people came from all over the world to go to that graduate program okay and our classrooms were filled with different languages and people from different literal sides of the world who came together because they loved history and they loved archaeology okay um, so people with a common goal from anywhere and everywhere and we always had stories to tell each other mm. we we always had things that we were trying to explain to each other and it was a wonderful place to be mm. and they were such it was it was an actual feeling of this is what the real world is like okay we're always caught up in our own little bubbles where it's right, like oh okay right. i'm in like midwest america it's just mm -hmm. midwest america right. but there's so much more to the world mm -hmm. and by creating these people First, we get to actually have characters with depth who explore different parts of the world. Right. And we get to create nice interactions between people who usually would never interact if they were just staying at home. But they're put mm -hmm. in this extraordinary situation together. And by doing so, we actually see that like a lot of things about humanity are very similar. 
and we get to have these wonderful languages. Some people who had never in their lives heard the Icelandic language listen to mm -hmm. our show and they finally go, oh my God, that's what an Icelandic person sounds like. Right, right. Um, all, I know, all I remember is what, what's his name, Bjork? Thor. Huh? Oh yeah, and Thor. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. Matter of fact, it's a guy at my job. He's from Iceland. His name is Thor. Mm. It must be a common name in Iceland. <laughs> but hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're going to go to our second commercial break. Yay. <laughs> Looking for a great home cooked meal and you don't have time to prepare it? Well, your solution is here Mad Mac Catering. The food is made with love and with a touch of salt. Contact us at 704 516 4334 or on Twitter at Smad Mac or the website www.madmax.net. That's www. Dot M A D M A C S dot net. Okay, Jonas. She said she saw something and we didn't believe her, but guess what? People can't pull themselves through doorways and down hatches, Jonas. I saw it too, Walter. We should have believed her. We should have warned her. The recordings, Walter. We need to get her, Graham. I don't know what it was, Rosa. What? What did it look like? Oh, Graham, it dragged her away. Just and we are back. We are back. We are back, of course, with the creators of the White Vault. Um, another insert right there. Um, right, right. Wh which one is that from? I don't remember. You that. don't be knowing. <laughs> <laughs> <It's more like, laughs> yeah, that's all right. Because I, I, well, I, I was going through so many different clips when I was trying to find, I say, mm -hmm. I want to find one that's going to, when people hear it, it kind of bring the intensity. And that. Oh, no, so, that was intense. And I wanted <laughs> to have some with the sound effects so tr we can discuss that with, with Travis. Travis. Yeah. So I thought that was a good clip. With a lot of good sound effects. Oh, that was a good segue. Yeah, no, I got you. you. Know I got you. It, there, there's just something going on up here. <laughs> well, well, my fault. <laughs> my bad. What segue, man, player? <laughs> so, uh, Travis. <laughs> so that 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 um, particular clip. You no, know, that first of all, let me say this. I enjoyed from a artist and creator standpoint that clip because you hear the different sound effects and you're like. I want. I'm thinking to myself. I wonder how he created some of those sounds. Are they voice tracks? Or are you physically making those sounds? Quite a few of them uh, are me playing with various things in a small closet, much like the one you see me in right now. Okay. <laughs> well, you did a good job because yeah. I, I felt like I was in the moment. You know, I mean, I think I started getting cold. I feel the snow. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Literally, when when you describe it in cold, and then you hear the the, the wind whistling, and the, yeah, 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 yeah the cracking, like, like yeah. them busting out the door, going to get um, oh, what is her name? No, Karina. not Karina. Yeah. Going to get Karina and everything. I was like, wow, that 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 right there, and that and I think that speaks to the brilliant speaks to the brilliance of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you had when you have a podcast like this. Yeah. You know, you, you already have one of your senses that's taken away and that's, you know, Vis the visual. Yeah. You can't see, in, you can see it maybe in your mind, but you can't physically see it. Yeah. And so when you have a show, like when you have those things taken away, you have to be good at creating the scene so that you can be like, almost like daredevil. You can sense it in your mind. You know, you can see it in your mind and say, that's, that's snow. Yeah. I can feel that creature. I can hear that person behind me. I know? felt the cold, man. Yeah, I don't right. care. I you felt the saying? cold. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> let me get my blanket. <laughs> I feel the cold. And so I think that's that's the brilliance to yeah, you know, to what you guys do. No, the writing is one part. 
Yeah. And because you can have all the good sound effects, but if the writing doesn't grasp you, the writing is garbage. You know, it's just said like that. Yeah. It's like, okay, it, it, it's still not a good podcast. Yeah. You know, so you need, you need those two elements. Of course, good actors too, but you need those elements, you know, and I think that what you guys do and are doing is great. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to speak with you guys. I want to get them on. Yeah. Because I want to kind of pick your mind and see what is that process? How, like they say, how's the sausage made? You know, <laughs> what's in the sauce? You know, yeah. that kind of thing. What's in the sauce? You know, uh, oh, our backgrounds are cooks too. So yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Make a lot of yeah. we make a lot of cooking references. Yeah, yeah we got a lot of cooking references. <laughs> right. So, um, Travis, when you get ready to make a sound. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this first. When, when you get the script, and you look at it, how do you go about, what's your process of going by, okay, how am I, how am I make these particular sounds for each of these particular scenes? Um, I'll oftentimes, I'm like the first round editor, so I'm usually looking at the, like, oh, there's a spell check error, because whatever. Okay. Um, but when I, when I get to Because like, I'm human, and she's I make it. <laughs> she's, really fast. Uh, she's not focusing on it. She's focusing on like, right. making sure the story's great. Right. So she hasn't done a spell check yet, so I'm, I'm that line. But I'm also looking at, um, okay, what, what am I going to need that's just abnormal? Like, okay, um, here's an outside scene. And she like says like, oh yeah, the characters are arguing. Like, well, I need to know what they're going to argue about. That's got to be in the script. So mm. she, in the background, she'll have it grayed out and say like, okay, these characters, this is in the background. This is what they're going to discuss. Okay. That happens a lot. Yeah. And this right. audio, you're right. not even going to hear or care about, but it's there. And we record mm -hmm. it at the intensity and the emotion of that scene every time. I'm also looking for stuff like um, breath, anything with human breath. I don't want to have mm. to breathe for the actors. So, okay character does a thing so i need them to exert um as they're lifting right. a, a heavy bag <sighs> <laughs> right right, I'm not gonna right. Do that. you hear that i'm not rosa um i don't sound very much at all rosa just trans from me so th that sort of stuff i'm also looking for um if there are sounds if they're in nature right mm -hmm. and it's not just wind because wind is in itself its own sound and it's usually right. going to cancel out most of stuff mm -hmm. there's different types of wind but um, I'm listening for, okay, well, do we hear birds? Do we hear, what, what is in nature? What do mm -hmm. I need to find? Because these animals are regional. And can you mm -hmm. identify what type of regional creatures you'd like to hear? Because, you know, a bird singing a certain way could be very distracting or it could right. add to the scene if it's a focus. Mm -hmm. So finding out what animals we want to include, because I edit with lots of layers and lots of isolation. So you just hear like wind, right. one track, footsteps, next track. Um, the specific bird throughout the entirety of the scene, next track. So right. I'm adding piece by piece every building block to try and create the world as authentic as possible. Air conditioner in the background, you know, one mm. track. Right. Um, Outpost Freestead, the inside is is actually like four layers, you know, because it's got its different wind sounds that go in the background. That's one track. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. got an air conditioner or heating unit. It's got um, a rattle. I forget the, the rattles. The fluorescent the, light The bulbs. fluorescent light bulbs have a sound. So there's a bunch of layering that takes place in all of it. And if I'm going too deep, uh, feel free to stop me. But um, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. No, 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 yeah, definitely intrigued. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. And also weird things like helicopter. Okay, we got to figure this out. Crap, what mm -hmm. type of helicopter? Um, uh, and anything unique. Like she's like, oh, this is Andy and Condor. I'm like, oh, how hard can that be? Yeah, they're super <laughs> endangered. And I'm getting audio from one of them. They're only like, there's one in a zoo in Florida. And that's <laughs> kind of what they got to go with. Or, and they don't okay. sound like a bird. They sound terrifying. They, they hiss. They don't, they don't make chirping. They only hiss. They go, ah! Oh, it's, wow. It's really creepy when you hear it. And when you yeah. hear it in the story, That's how my the characters are like, what is that? It's, yeah. it's not a normal sound. Yeah. <laughs> There's seven foot birds, too. <laughs> okay. so, I love it. I, I love that's it. what I'm, I'm freaking out about. Or like if they have a, a phone, um, mm -hmm. I'll often ask, okay, is it a sat phone? Because it's a very different ringtone. And what year mm -hmm. is this? Oh, it's 2012. Oh. But I got to find the right model because this phone, these ringtones don't exist until after 2012. Yeah. So that was like a good That's, hour I of like my that. time. Wow. <laughs> I like that, that though. I like that, Travis. I like that. So I, here's a question. I'm going to ask, ask it of you guys separate. So I'm going to start with, with uh, Travis. Sure. Um, and we were, Who are you? So if we were at a coffee shop, Drinking coffee or whatever you like, you know, a shake, whatever. Tequila with orange juice. I don't think they have that at, at this coffee shop. Oh, they don't. <laughs> yeah. And I ain't there. I mean, unless you have it in your bag already. <laughs> but anyway, um, and we're sitting down at the table. What will we talk about? Like, hmm. 
let's see what would we talk about we probably talk about uh like something cool on television or video okay. games or okay. um maybe podcasting again i'm sort of a you become your career at, at uh, right if you really love what you do right um or various uh you know other stories and media what you're working about i like to also talk with people about what they do i come from sort of a business management background and i like okay. to think of like ways to creatively help people right. um or that help them help themselves okay I like that. That's actually my undergrad degree is in business under uh, organi organizational business management. Yeah, yeah. That's my that's my undergrad degree in. Um, so t you mentioned TV shows. So what shows are you watching? Uh, right now we're we're kind of in between stuff. We're, we're keeping up with the Marvel game as they release stuff. Oh yeah. Oh uh, my god. That, yeah. That, right. Yes. That, that, uh, oh my god. That, oh, you talking about Falcon and shoot Wandavision, yeah. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I mean, uh, so. Little sidebar since we down this road. Sidebar. Since we down this rabbit hole. When you first saw WandaVision, the first episode, what was your first impression? First impression was I hope this goes dark. I hope this goes dark. Got what you want. I, was, I didn't get it. <laughs> yeah. I was I was kind of like, I don't I don't understand it. And I, I think for me. I think because of the Marvel movies that we saw prior to that, I was expecting that. You know, I was expecting, okay. Nah, that's your fault. See, you went in there you with gonna expectations. See, you're going to see Vision uh, doing <laughs> and Wanda fighting against somebody, and you're going to see, uh, you know, really power to, to, of Wanda that you didn't see. And, the, and I was thinking I would see all these different things, and I saw, like, this, uh, there was, in, like, the TV show type. I was like, what is this? And uh, what really got me to continue watching it is that I'm a I'm a YouTube fanatic, so I'm always on YouTube, and I happened to see this particular a uh, couple of people that had um, channels that talked about you know little Easter eggs that's going to be in the Wandavision show, and that kind of got me interested in watching it. So I kind of hung on going, which I'm glad because it ended up being a great show. Mm. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um. Okay, Katie. Same to you. <laughs> uh, uh, we're at a coffee shop and we having. Coffee or tequila, like this guy said. Tequila with orange juice. <laughs> GMT. Okay. <laughs> yeah. well, your favorite drink of choice. <laughs> Sipping the gin and juice. Lady <laughs> bag. Um, and we're just having a conversation. What would that conversation be? Uh, so for me, I if I'm stuck at home, I'm playing video games and usually if i'm playing with my friends i'm going to be playing dungeons and dragons uh, <laughs> and if it's a nice day or a nice weekend i i'm probably talking about um the hikes i wish i was doing because i okay. like getting out there i take my dog on hikes and uh, okay i just get to go up on a mountain and just stare at the distance for a long amount of time so, <laughs> so but, you, uh, oh go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no um right now i'm really enjoying uh i, I watch a lot of youtube but i I mostly watch streamers who don't who put everything on YouTube instead of putting it on Twitch or in addition to Twitch. Okay. So I'll watch a bunch okay. of people play like Among Us, and I'm right now really deep into watching people play all of the mods for Among Us. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people people screaming at each other and looking for an imposter, which uh, <laughs> feels feel in my alley. So. <laughs> I'll be on brand. <laughs> uh, oh. otherwise yeah a lot of dungeons and dragons stuff um travis and i play D, &D together and uh okay. like we, we've even played D, &D with like my dad like my my family is a oh, bunch really? of nerds. Okay. So... <laughs> hey that's good i uh, mean it is I, I i like the one thing i'm a big family guy so you know whatever pulls our family together you know with yeah. D, &D um, killing a dragon is a right. bonding moment see yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good i'm I, I like that uh i saw that you guys um play dnd &D with the cast or white vault how, how was that did it get too intense that was a lot of fun <laughs> that's it, phenomenal it, it got really intense we actually turned it into its own podcast because it wound up being wow. very enjoyable <laughs> i mean imagine getting a bunch of voice actors together and then telling them we're gonna do some stuff <laughs> and they're all on board so yeah we made a podcast about it oh good <laughs> That got really, really dark and fun. Um, it's it is a horror. It's, it's, it's another horror podcast, horror podcast, guys. It is a real play, but it is horror. Um, you guys just kind of mentioned your voice actors. Um, what exactly are you guys looking for when they come up? And I'm, I'm assuming you guys do a casting call. Um, 
for these voice actors? Or what are you looking for? Because it's not just people are just reading stuff. Like they have to act it out. Right. So, so what exactly are you looking for in your voice actors? Authenticity and language, first and foremost. Like okay. when you do these really obscure casting calls, like, are you uh, a male between the ages of blank to blank from from or you know of Chinese descent who can possibly <laughs> speak Manchu? <laughs> like, okay, that's kind of niche. Yeah, right. <laughs> but then you know, after we have our, our nicheness about us, the, the real <laughs> question is, um, I like what that. is what are we? Can, can, is this someone who can actually emote? Will they go far enough? Mm -hmm. right. I can always rein someone back in, but mm -hmm. if you're dying in a cave, because you'll probably die if you're in one of Caitlin's stories, <laughs> uh, can can I reasonably believe that you're dying and being murdered? <laughs> and that's really what it comes down to. Can they emote pain is a pretty big thing. <laughs> or, or fear or sadness. This, right. this most recent one was, was pretty yeah. tough. We worked with a lot of people who'd never spoken English in a large capacity before. <laughs> and oh, okay. pushed them through it. And okay. it was it's just like the one of the largest undertakings of me as a director was actually having to to go and record with these people remotely through Zoom uh, at a distance mm -hmm. of like twelve hour time zones, you know, twelve time zones away. So it was like <laughs> my nights uh, every night for like two weeks. Yeah. Um, wow. Them being authentic. Um, if we're looking for a specific language, them actually being able to speak that language. Yeah. We have had points where people have like said, oh, yeah, I'm going to put in a, a, an audition. I speak this language. And then you get to a section where they're supposed to speak another language and they try to trick us. So they'll like say they speak French and they'll say uh -huh. something in French and then we'll run it by our friend who's French. And they're like, that is not French. <laughs> <laughs> You're, a liar. A lie. You're a liar. <laughs> I think the real cool thing, though, is with Caitlin's writing, a lot of these people working with are first time actors or it's their first time in a role where they're not the villain. Like okay. Atham Alwan, who is from uh, Lebanon, mm -hmm. he's usually typecasted as like, oh, you're the terrorist. He's like, right. you I get to be the good guy? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was really cool. Um, and he, Or like you said, with Peter and his voice, they always right. cast him as the bad guy. <laughs> and we're like, what if you wanted to be the person trying to solve the problem? <laughs> <laughs> he's so, but he's, he's one of those characters that, He's very complex. And I, what I mean by that is that when you, your initial thought of him is a very cold person, you know, very cold, straight to the point. But then as you go in throughout the uh, different um, uh, episodes, you do see some flashes of compassion. You do see some flashes of humanity in him. He's an onion. You're like, oh, wow. You know, I didn't expect that from him. You know, and I like that. And that kind of gets to my point I was going to make, too, is like, I like the way you build your story, your story arcs. You know, it's like, as you see a character, you get to know the character, you fall in love with the character, and then you kill him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> That's how horror works. Come on, Jamal. Yeah, but, some, you know, most horror story is kill, kill, kill. You know, you really don't know the character that much about the character. It did survive. All right, it did survive. <laughs> Until the sequel. <laughs> right. I, I want to mention a character. I won't mention too much because you haven't got to it. Um, now, you, now you do your thing. You, you won't ruin it for me. Uh, I, I um, promise. Why can't I think of his name? So in, in season, no, I keep saying season, episode four. Okay. I mean, is it episode four? Se season four. Season, season four. four. Okay. Right. The, the, oh, wow. I'm going to have a blank. The guy. Did you smoke my shit? No. Man? The guy who was uh, the good friend, or oh, was he a boyfriend of Jeffrey Moore? I can't, I couldn't really tell in the oh, writing. Right. Huh? Yeah, they're Seven, actually, Sun Hall. they are fiancés right. in the story. Okay, see, I said, I was trying to, when I was listening, so I said, are, are they together? Are they really good friends? Because at one point I thought they were really good friends. And some stuff they were saying, I was like, no, they sound like they together. But um, the uh, I like the uh, character that you built to him. Um. In some ways, I kind of felt sorry for him. And in some ways, I was like, you know, because let me say it like this. His, 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 um, him being scared of bugs. Mm -hmm. That was a real, it was like, okay, I can, I can see that, you know. And at the same time, he still was had enough courage to go up on this mountain and to be in this place, you know, that he had no idea what was there. You know, he went into the cave and had no idea what was there. But at the same time, he was scared of bugs and stuff like that. So it showed depthness of his character. Shit, I hate spiders too. You know, too. and then the fact that he had to cut his foot off, I was like, oh my God, I felt bad for him. 
Say like anything but that. They'll cut his foot off. <laughs> you know? uh, can, can he get a violet foot or something? Make him a superhero. You know? <laughs> you know? But the I, new I, Winter Soldier. Right, the new Winter Soldier. <laughs> Vibranium. You know, something. <laughs> but I enjoy that. You know, and I think and that goes to what I said earlier about you know the greatness of the show. Mm-hmm. You know, is is great writing. Is is great. Uh, attention to detail, like you said. Great attention to detail. Um, it's, it's like the, it's like you guys are literally like, we can't just make it sound like this. Like right. we got to make sure it was this. Right. You know, saying there's a difference, and, and it, it makes a huge difference. It 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 brings more um, authenticity. Mm-hmm. It brings more more. It's, it's more impactful. Right. When when you take those details and it helps paint the picture it, right. it really does right like, like so you guys are on the right yeah I, nowhere yeah so <laughs> so um before we close out oh was you about to say something like i heard did i hear something you to say oh something? no that was me laughing oh okay <laughs> <laughs> it's a very unique sound right you know you should add, that, add that to your sound arc but, um, <laughs> well what i wanted to say before we close out too is that uh this has been a pleasure mm-hmm and you know you mentioned that you guys were nerds i think we all have nerds in us yeah no we all do i think we all nerd out on something yeah. some of us don't want to admit it no but, you like, know like, like i'm a big wrestler he's a big wrestling head. head yeah you i know? love wrestling i love, love wrestling. wrestling but you know, um, i do love comics you right know? comedy is I, one I, of mine um, yeah, yeah. podcast like this is one of mine uh, all right that's, that's, <laughs> Keeps me sane. <laughs> keeps you sane? Yeah. It, 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 it keeps me from being a killer. <laughs> I, she had to write about you. you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, the weightless killer. <laughs> he kills over lack of marijuana. But I do I do enjoy even the the fact that you add a bit of humor in yeah. to this horror podcast because realness too but you know, realness that's too. what makes it real though but because, realness is too because the conversation that the people right. are having first words but right. it, it, you can feel that like this is a legit conversation right it's not forced it's not planned it's not prop it's mm-hmm. conversation right so, and so yeah. um kudos kudos yeah. to you guys kudos you know. to you guys um <laughs> yeah i really enjoyed it i mean i had another question but you kind of answered it so i don't have to read that one off yeah if you want to cast a pothead i'm i'm, I'm available about all the time yeah, yeah. But, we yeah, I, I, yeah we, we like to ahead. take ourselves seriously sometimes but also do comedy we, we sneak mm-hmm. stuff in sometimes oh, yeah. levity is is a great way that a lot of people try to deal with tense feelings right and terror. right and it's That's what it really realistic right. Like if 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 we get into a really bad situation, odds are one of us will probably end up laughing and we'll right. be like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm just trying to deal with this." Right. I'm going to right. Laugh. I like that. No, you're I like right. that. No, no, real quick, ha, um, I know we, we we're short on time, but Go ahead. I gotta ask, um, how, how has the uh, the pandemic kind of slowed your progress down of of creating content, or has it amped it? Has it slowed it down? Where, where you guys at dealing with the pandemic? It hasn't really changed anything we've done production wise. I would say. Uh, the uh, protests in Chile slowed us down. Mm-hmm. The okay. explosion in Lebanon slowed us down because that okay. actually hurt Haytham's house. Um, okay. Wow. So, like, those are the events that really hit us. It's mm-hmm. not so much pandemic because everyone records remotely pretty much by themselves. Okay. Uh, because we already had everybody record from home because their homes are on different sides of the world. Mm-hmm. We already had that infrastructure in place before the pandemic. Okay. Nobody records with one another. Nobody talks to one another. They just record by themselves. With a okay. okay. So that's gone pretty well. We actually tried um, for the first seven or eight months of the pandemic, we tried really hard to put out more kind of bonus content because okay. we were trying really hard to keep people entertained. Um, we did a White Vault musical. We did a musical. I heard about that. Um, we did one. We did Nalira's Day Off because we have another show that um, L. Jeffrey Moore is also on called Fast mm-hmm. Horizon. Yes. And we put out a short uh, comedy for that one as well, because we were just, we had, I think we called it Oper- Operation Entertainment. Yes. And we were just trying to keep people entertained, because we understood, like, we were in a pretty good position because our job wasn't affected that much right. by the pandemic. Right. But a lot of other people were. And yeah. like I said, horror and adventure and sci-fi and entertainment in general is a great way to escape. And we had the opportunity to help people escape. Um so we tried and eventually we ran out of steam and we're like, okay, guys, it's been eight months. We've been doing this for eight months. We have to go back to a normal schedule. It really seems like every week. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, no, we understand. Oh, like yes. trying to come up with content, you drop in every week, you 
look, we understand. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, we, um, oh, go ahead. No, uh, this has been fantastic. Um, before we uh, let you guys go, uh, Caitlin and Travis, uh, go ahead, plug all of your content away where everybody can find you at social media wise. Every everything that you guys got white vault related, sure. drop it so the people can can go find your content. You can find all of our stuff at foolandscholar.com. Uh, if you are, that's we're Fool and Scholar Productions, um, the Fool, the Scholar, respectively. <laughs> uh, it's a long story, not getting into it. But uh, you can also find our stuff at uh, thewhitevault.com or anywhere you listen to podcasts for the White Vault. It's a horror show. If you want to hear our cast play D and D, Dark Dice is that one. Our first podcast was Liberty, and our sci-fi that we're uh, working on is called Vast Horizon. You can also find all of our stuff in a very pretty RSS feed on our Patreon, which is how okay. we survive. We're fully fan-funded. Um, okay. That is literally how we do everything we do, um, is patreon.com uh, slash foolandscholar. And it's got the musical and all the bonus content and uh, a new season starting soon called The White Vault Avram, which is going to be really intense. And I can't wait to share more about that soon. <laughs> yes. All yes. right. We um, love it. We love it. Here we go. There we go. That is the creators of the White Vault, Caitlin and Travis. Man, what a great show uh, we just had with them. Right. Um, very intriguing. I'm telling you, um, I'm I'm on Spotify. I'm a Spotify user, and I'm I'm on episode six of season one. And I'm telling you, it's captivating. Something that literally takes um, your number one sense away of vision and take it away. And when you're talking about taking um, a literally a a movie. And you just turn it blank, mm -hmm. and you put it on audio, and, and this is literally what you get. You get the sound effects, the the uh, the you can hear the emotion and the characters, right? Uh, in the writing, um, you hear that the, literally the sound of the elements around them. I mean, literally, they they have literally been so detailed oriented, and, and, and it comes out in it working. Right, right. They are doing a fantastic job. Go check them out for sure. But until next time. Going over to the website, www.ioftenwonder19.com, where you can always get all the information of our content. Right, right. Of course, from all the shows that we have coming mm -hmm. down the line. Mm -hmm. And again, Apple, iOS, iPhone users, going over to the Apple Store, download the app for the IOW network. It is up and running. And Android users, it's coming. It's Be coming. patient. Give us a couple weeks to be up in the Google's Play Store. Yeah, yo. But anyway, that is another episode of I Often Wonder in the Books. It's your boy, Wildcard Mar, leaving the building. Detroit Mail, the man with the great master plan for the IOW network. We are out the building. Love somebody, hug somebody. Peace. Peace.